Right now, the time is 6.38. We got some storms making noise today in two separate waves. Yeah, that's right. First this afternoon and then overnight about this time tomorrow morning, going to be looking at a second wave rolling in. And we've got a level three in place for both of those waves coming through. So it's certainly a day to watch the radar and a night to watch the radar as well. The Storm Prediction Center has gone ahead and issued a tornado watch for parts of central Georgia. This includes from Crawford County down through Peach and Houston and then back up through Twiggs, Wilkinson and Washington and then points northward. So it includes Bibb, Monroe, Jones, Baldwin, Hancock, Jasper, Putnam uh, until 1 p.m. Now I do expect this to be expanded further to the south later this afternoon as this line of storms continues to push down to the south. Now we are quiet in central Georgia for the moment, but we zoom out and look at what's going on. Let's start in South Carolina. We had a line of storms working its way through earlier this morning. Those have really faded away. This is the same line that went through the Nashville area last night. Now this morning over in northwest Georgia, we're watching another line of storms coming out of Tennessee. This is going to be our wave one. So we have severe thunderstorm warnings from the Tennessee North Carolina line through northwest Georgia. Now it's going to be in metro Atlanta in about an hour and then has its site set on central Georgia for later this morning. Now this level three is in place today for the damaging wind risk. That's what the driver is here, but we are also going to be looking at the possibility of large hail and a brief spin up tornado. I want to highlight though that with this damaging wind risk, it is going to be impacting a lot more people than a tornado risk would today. And that is why I'm uh, highlighting this in a way that I would not otherwise. I think it's going to be a little more widespread. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how damage happens, whether it's a tornado or not. It's the fact that it did happen and that we're going to be watching for that this afternoon. So we've moved into this 30% risk area, which sounds low, right? 30% doesn't sound too high. But when you factor in that it's accounting for one singular point and then an area 25 miles around it, you get up there on the scale relatively quick and 30% uh, is up there and prompting that level three. The Storm Prediction Center has also outlined this area in the black hatched lines for a significant severe area, and that means winds could top 75 miles an hour. So let's get to it on future view. I don't want you to pay attention to the exact timing for the exact cities. I want you to kind of think of this as a window here. So if this is at noon, we're looking at the leading edge of the storms and say Jasper, Putnam, Northern Edge of Monroe County, let's say 11 to one. Play this forward into the afternoon. This is two moving through Macon, Warner Robins, Crawford County, Roberta, Irwinton over towards Wrightsville. Let's say one to three. And then as this continues to move down towards the south, let's say, you know, two to four, three to five and so forth. Now that's wave one. Again, the damaging wind risk, the primary driver here, but also watching the risk of hail and a spin up tornado with those storms. We enter a lull tonight, 9 p.m. Not a whole lot going on, but then by the time we get to early tomorrow morning, and be watching another wave of storms come in from Alabama. So this is 4 a.m. There's 5 a.m. And there's 6 a.m. Look how fast these storms are moving. Again, I would allow a larger window for these overnight storms than I would for the afternoon. In fact, I'd say as early as midnight and as late as 8 a.m. So that's what we're watching for wave two. Again, damaging winds are going to be really the only elevated thing in wave two. It's going to be the damaging winds and hail elevated in wave one. Also, the tornado risk elevated as well, but just not as high as that hail and damaging wind risk. And again, today is going to be from 11 a.m. or so until about 5 p.m. this afternoon. So have a way to receive warnings overnight tonight. I want to emphasize do not rely on the outdoor warning sirens. They are not designed to be heard inside. Instead, you can count on a NOAA weather radio, the 13 WMAZ app, but also the wireless emergency alerts. I would also keep an ear out for severe thunderstorm warnings. As I was saying earlier, I think damaging winds are going to be more of a problem than the tornado risk. And with that, you only get severe thunderstorm warnings, not tornado warnings. So 85 through the afternoon today, 83 tomorrow, 79 on Saturday followed by 81 on Sunday. That, of course, is Mother's Day. We'll keep a chance of rain around next week, 20% for Monday and then 30% for Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, thank you, Alex. A good time to remind you, if you don't already have it, make sure you download the 13 WMAZ app. You can get it in the Google Play or Apple Store or scan that QR code right there on your screen. Once you get the app, make sure to sign up for notifications, and that way you'll get the latest weather and news alerts sent right to your phone.